What's up, everybody? Jackson here today with my little brother, Chubbs. Hello, everyone. Today, we're doing an early impressions of Risk of Rain 2, which is still currently in early access on Steam. It's available for $19.99. Our little brother, Chris, bought us both a copy of it, and oh my god, am it I so glad he did. It is, it is so good. <laughs> <laughs> So, first and foremost, if you're unaware, me and Chubbs loved the first Risk of Rain. I picked it up on my Sony. We played it split, same screen co-op. Uh, we didn't play a lot of it online, but we played it with me, you, Chris, same screen, like, a whole lot. Uh, I remember one time, me and Chubbs got to the point where we'd been playing it so long, like, into the night, that you straight up fell asleep, dude. Passed out. Huh? And I didn't even realize, because it was well into ha-ha-ha-ha-ha difficulty <laughs> time, so... Uh. So if you're stepping into this, you know nothing about Risk of Rain. First and foremost, go pick the first one up. It's like two fifty on the PC. I'm sure you can get it 10 bucks or under on, P on console. Do it. Go get Risk of Rain. The first one it has my glowing fucking approval... I couldn't tell anyone to get a, a more fun game that is short bursts of just excellent gameplay. Oh, yeah. The, the likes of which where it's roguelike, but it feels more skill-based, where even if you get bad luck and you get bad items, which can occur in the course of a run, you're going to still be able to come back from it if you're skilled enough. To, you know, know what to do, how to kite, how to handle all the different enemies. Right. And then on top of that, like you were saying, sometimes it's a bad roll. But it's not like this item is useless. It's all beneficial. Yeah. It's just you need certain things at certain stages. Yeah, you're going to need certain items in order to build your character in a way that you're able to Take handle down. all the difficulty. Yeah, yeah. Basically, Risk of Rain is a game about a starship that is attacked mid-flight and i'm sure this will still be in the game because risk of rain 2 to me currently feels like risk of rain transformed into third into the third dimension oh yeah it feels the exact same in structure and everything levels are similar in design and feel so like to me i feel like what's going to happen is we're going to eventually face off against i forget his name but the space pirate the leader the main who attacked the ship initially. bad guy yeah yes. yeah so as this ship is attacked by this guy all of the all the survivors are jettisoned off the ship and that's where you start you start the character right as he's about to jettison off the ship and it, there's one of i think there's seven in the game right now currently yeah because there's going to be more i think it's going to be 10 yeah 10 10 upon full release so and once this hits release if they charge you 60 dollars for this game fucking buy it It is going to be fucking worth it buy it <laughs> it is going to be if you worth it. if you are on pc go get it now on steam for 20 bucks because i assure you that the value of this is going to match titles like shovel knight and others that you are uh fucking dead cells there's another one i right, can mention yeah. but games that i personally have bought in earlier on in the stages and then had these fucking awesome kick-ass indie developers take the money that they got from sales early adopters and fucking transform that product into a fucking well worth it 60 dollars day one game oh yeah like that shovel knight if you bought shovel knight the collection even if they charged you 60 which they never would but even if they charged you 60 you're getting the bang for your buck there like no other now with the fucking plague knight playthrough the Spectre. The multiple different yeah. campaigns that you can go through with that game. And it all tells a story from that person's perspective, which yes. all of these characters are And it are all part. coincides into the same story. Yeah. <laughs> this, so, like, that's the thing. That game. And so, this is going to shape up to be that sort of product. Where I believe, like, I believe personally that if I had spent $60 on Risk of Rain 1, even with its pixelated graphics and, you know old school 2d platform style game i still at 60 dollars would feel like that was a justified purchase when i look at the time me and you put into that game you chris all of us playing that for hours and hours and hours into the night oh yeah so risk of rain starts off with you choosing one of the right now one of the seven survivors and currently there's the commando the Engineer, Huntress, Artificer, Mercenary, Multi, and Rex. And we'll get into all of those individually 
gameplay wise things like that how they fit into a group element what you should be prioritizing that character with over other characters certain things like that from our impressions based on you know the almost 50 hours we've spent playing in that so but you land on the planet and depending on your chosen di di difficulty which there are three there's drizzle which is a more beginner friendly experience uh, a very good difficulty to play multiplayer with where you're having to split up items so and it's just a good it's it's a good base level for any beginner stepping into risk of rain then there's uh what's the ra rainfall uh the n mid difficulty rainstorm rainstorm which is the mid difficulty a little bit faster with the enemy coming at you yeah, a little the bit more gets yeah. a little bit harder sooner and then if you're a maniac there's monsoon <laughs> <laughs> monsoon is insane it's just like overwhelmed almost immediately oh yeah so you start off on a planet and from that point on you're set into a gameplay loop that changes in so many ways first and foremost your starting location on the planet is going to be random your starting location is going to be random based on one of two options so for level one there's two separate worlds that it could possibly be level two same story level three same story and i'm not sure if it tears out into four i'm not sure or if it's only three right now three state sets right because right now the ending isn't there so it's just it's continuous mode right oh yeah now. you just go until you die dying is the end yeah. game and there's like not even all the bosses are there because yeah. they recently just added a new level with yeah, a new the scorched, boss yeah, yeah the scorched acres with the what was it the grove tender the grove tender yeah. yes and these are all reappearing bosses from the first game just put into 3d and given new life in a big bad way oh yeah uh, i'd say this game difficulty wise is 10 times harder than the first one being on a 3d platform you throw you can get attacked from any angle whereas in the 2d first first game it was just one side one side yeah, you had I mean, to cover left or right that was it and they added some difficulty in that with flying enemies and things like that but difficulty in this one, I feel, is so much more intense. Oh, yeah, because you could be sitting there focusing on a group of enemies in front of you, and then all of a sudden you're getting hit, so you flip around to sprint yeah. away, and there's a whole row behind you. So everything you kill gives you gold and experience points. The gold is going to be spent on opening chests scattered throughout whatever location you're currently in. These are going to also be random once again. So a chest may be in one position on one playthrough and it will never be there again right. until you finally play the game enough that you you know hit that point where it's there. Right. So that's randomized and you're going to want to scavenge the planet and gain as much power on that planet as possible but you're going to want to be fast about it too because the second you hit the planet's surface a timer begins which will eventually lead to the enemies knowing exactly where you are and this leads to them sending more general units big badass units elites it eventually gets to a point where elite monsters and bosses are the only thing yeah. spawning <laughs> yeah you might see some little enemies here and there but they're gonna be on top of a ton of elites and a ton and then they have the variant uh malachite yeah. variants of enemies the frost later on. and the magma yeah and so you're gonna want to be fast and eventually after you've accumulated some power you're gonna either one of two things is going to happen you're either going to hit a point where you're just going to die or you're going to hit a point where you're overpowered and you're able to handle almost everything but enemies are so powerful at this point that they're going to one shot you and they will eventually every run will end in death oh yeah there unless you want to take the monolith situation and get yourself out that way but i'm not going to go into that because i want to leave all of that stuff there's a lot of things in the game to find and enjoy that to me feels very souls like in nature now i i'm going to use that term here because not because it's a hip tagline to use or that it's a poppy thing to talk about because dark souls is the best game ever made and everything is dark souls no right. what i'm saying is 
there's a sense of discovery in Dark Souls, not only when you find a hidden item, but a hidden item that is accompanied by some form of lore. And when you find things in certain areas that are related to the zone, I would say the one I can remember off the top of my head that really blew my mind was recently, and it was in Dark Souls 3, and I was in the old city where, or where is it, Yorm the Giant's Yeah, at. the profane yeah, capital. Yeah, the profane capital. I was down in there, and I got Logan's scroll, and I read it, and maybe it was because my mind was on Dark Souls 2, when I because the, at that first bonfire, once you get to where Yorm's actually at, before you get to that area in the chapel. Right. But with him, fucking, when you get to that bonfire, there's that guy from Dark Souls 2. Right. The guy with the ladder. So you see that guy and he's dead and then I read Logan's scroll and I just I found it I off I think you get it off the guy you kill who's supposedly the pontiff. I don't know if that's true or whatever. Right, yeah. That guy. Anyway, you get it somewhere down there. It's pretty hard to obtain. And I read that and it was just like, "Whoa, how awesome is that?" And I've had those moments in and I don't feel bad about spoiling Dark Souls t- t- 3 because yeah. it's been out. This yeah. is an early access. I don't want to spoil anything so early on. Knowing that some people may only get this initially on console. And I'd like for them to experience those moments without tarnish. Yeah. Discovery but moments. There are notes that you can find that allude to a little story. There's one that's very Lovecraftian. Another one that's I, I they, they, it's just really great told from like a first person journal perspective right and all of these things are tied to the environment and the people who are writing things or things you are reading about can actually be discovered in the world and with this being so early on but them still having these little surprises environmentally and things that you can find that you would never think it's there you would (laughs) never think but to find these little things and like the new thing with that the golden shrine right yeah it's just it's insane to imagine what this is going to be like in 2020 a year from now when it's fully released yeah it's 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 just going to grow in value in my opinion oh yeah because i'm just having so much fun oh yeah so much fun playing this (laughs) but that's the gist of risk of rain is you you're a survivor, you hit the planet, loot everything, kill everything you can because you're going to need gold in order to unlock the things, gain as much power. Then once you're finished, you hit the teleporter, which is this is the same exact exact game as the first one. You hit the teleporter, it looks similar. You start it, a boss appears, you then have to capture a a radius around the teleporter to 90 or to 100% as well as destroy that boss mob that was spawned. Right. And once those two are, things are completed, you don't have to kill every enemy. Sometimes it's safer just to hit the portal and get the hell out. Right. Because, you know, later but, on, you're just mobbed. But this is something, like, from what I remember from the first game, is you had to kill every enemy, right? I, I don't remember if you did or if we just did it because it netted you experience and gold. Yeah, I, I can't remember, remember we, that. I remember because, we used to play that way. Yeah. Like, if I don't there know was an if, enemy, yeah. you know. And it might have been that way. Right. It, not, it may have been that way where you had to kill every enemy in the first game. This one's not like that. No, it would be too chaotic because yeah. the worlds are so huge. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> And it's, they, the enemies are just, towards the end, they're just spawning in on you as the difficulty increases. Oh, yeah. And it's nuts. It gets so hectic. <laughs> let's, let's start with the commando. We're now just going to give a rundown of the current survivors in the game. At, at, uh, it's seven right now. And this is at the Scorched Acres update that we're making this video. So Right. What we have right now is we have the commando. And the commando was in the first game, and he's an all-around just really good character. However, the the thing that makes him all-around very good is his dodge. Now, the problem I have personally with him in this game, that I this is one thing I'll say, is I feel like his dodge needs to be increased to two charges from the jump. Right. Or it needs to have a shorter cooldown. Right. Because right now, playing him in solo and in co-op, if you don't get the sort of right items, and there's one item you can obtain that gives you an extra charge to your utility skill, which would be his dodge. Um, unless you're getting these sorts of things, 
or life still lots of healing lots of shielding lots of you know infusions yeah. or flight yes. something to get you up and away yeah not having double jumps really sucks when you get a run without any jumps or mobility that's that's rough but that's oh, yeah. a more general thing that applies to every character yeah but for for the commando i'd say if you just gave him another charge on his dodge if he's unable to get built earlier on, it would give the player a more fair advantage to come back from that. Right. To come back from the... Because I... And I love the way the items work. I love the RNG-based, you know, drops. Right. Being able to see. I think it works better in a multiplayer setting. I feel like in solo, it's, like, worse for me to get, like, for instance, on him, an R2 ability, an extra clip, which will give his R2, his right mouse click ability it will give it another charge it's not that good i mean it's aoe it pierces through enemies the commandos are too right but the problem i have with it is that with the charges it's that thing has such a fast cooldown that you really don't need multiple charges however a huntress right. would benefit immensely Oh yeah, her R two attack being a attack that pings off enemies and actually does more damage with it, it's a it's a genuine AOE ability. Oh yeah. Whereas the commandos R two is sure it's AOE because it's piercing, but you have to line them in this small yeah. little you know yeah. area. Huntress <laughs> says she just it, her R two is she throws a glaive that will ping off of all enemies in the area. Right. If they're doing mass amounts of yeah. damage. If they're close enough to each other, it'll yeah. just bounce back and forth. Boom, 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 boom. And with <laughs> extra clips, she's able to use that more effectively with, you know, two, three, four of those. She's a beast. Oh yeah. Whereas the commando of heroes, like I recently played a run solo where I got a ton of those. So with the random items, I feel like they work better in a group setting because you're there and you're on a huntress. And yeah. I'm, you know, I'm a merc. So I get, I'm like, here, you get that. I don't need that. And then yeah. I have you who has something that's more beneficial for your survivor. And then your survivor is doing more effective things. And it's going to take the heat off of me in the long game if I'm playing solo. Sure, I get to keep all the items to myself. That's not necessarily a good thing, and no. I like that. Yeah. I like that balance with co-op being both harder but easier. Having to make that compromise of items given to each, you know, person. Right. But the commando, I notice, if you can get a uh, bleed... Um, anything that procs off of auto attacks, which there's a lot. <laughs> if you and if you're able uh, to get, they're yeah. really good for yes. him. You know, stun yeah. grenades, sticky stun bombs, grenades, yes. bleeds, <clears throat> so many different things. Yeah, there's a lot of auto attack procs. Yeah, and these are really good for him. And the great thing about those being there are so many is that the engineer also benefits from auto attack procs. Right. The huntress also benefits from auto attack procs. But while you're with your group, you make the decision, okay, well, I'm going to stack bleed on the commando. You guys, you take those stickies. Right. You know, Chris, he's playing the engineer. Right. Chris, you take the, you take the fucking, you know, stickies. Stun grenades. The yeah. stun grenades. The stun grenades. Whatever. Because it'll stun them. With your turrets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your turrets will be able to stun. Because, because the engineer works in a great way. Yeah. But that's, so like anyone who benefits <clears throat> off of procs, you're able to make these, you know, compromises with each other and kind of focus one person. Okay, well you stack bleed on the commando because if you stack bleed, it's going to activate more often it's also going to do more damage and here also take this attack speed you know take this critical hit okay now take this headdress that makes it so when you get a critical hit there's a chance that your attack speed increases right and it stacks yes. three times <laughs> and then once they get that and a few crits then they no longer need attack speed and the huntress can take attack speed or the engineer can take attack speed yeah and it just feels like with a group dynamic, especially people that you're actively communicating with, not in an online random setting, but people yeah. you're actively communicating with and playing with and you're talking to each other, I, I feel like multiplayer is the way this game is to be played. Oh, yeah. I felt that way about the first one, too. The first one I played by myself a few times, but for the most part, the vast majority of time spent playing Risk of Brain 1 was with you or with Crumb. 
yeah. you know, fucking playing it, playing it with people. Yeah. Which I was going to note real quick that our experience with the multiplayer, like you just noted, is with people that we know. Yeah. And from what uh, Nito was telling us, the online uh, matchmaking for this game is that it's just a race to see who, yeah, can, who get can get the most items. items. Which in that case, no wonder it's fucking like claimed as being harder with people because you know yeah. nobody's communicating that's what i've nobody's heard nobody's talking I've, and about I've heard it that in gg man's review he said it was harder with people he has a point though right with i mean i'd say like i said if you're gonna play with people drizzle is the way to go well that and you have to communicate like if yeah. you see an item like for example a war banner and you're the fucking huntress it's not really going to benefit you but the engineer he's already setting up his turrets and setting up yeah. zones so the war banner would drop and add more Helps to the him zone get a more a better zone exactly and so like that's with the with the characters the survivors there's i'd say hard dps like boss dps right and then there's like zoners who i feel are like they do good boss dps but i feel like they're better at kind of setting up a position and holding it down or in the case of rex not only doing that but also controlling the enemies yeah, and how much they can yeah move. crowd control yeah uh, Multi, uh, multi, too. multi has a lot yep. of crowd control or so, in the case of the mercenary he's just like a shit on everything but he's gonna get hit really hard yeah and he's know? gotta be swervy he's so gotta, gotta be like, in and out yeah he's more of a specialty character which i'll get into but the commando i feel it, it's going to be the first class that you start with when yes. you pick up risk of rain two it's going to be the first character you start with when you pick up Risk of Rain 1. Right. He's the all-rounder. He's very solid. Like I said, I think he could use one more uh, utility, like just out of the gate as a passive you know, buff. Right. Or a quicker cooldown on the dodge. That would help him in single player and multiplayer survive the later levels a lot better. Because it gets to a point where you just have to have that dodge. And if you haven't gotten the utility skill then you have it and then there's a pretty a pretty significant cooldown yeah it may seem like it's fast like i think it's only three seconds or something but in that game all it takes is a split millisecond for you to die yeah one false step onto like a malachite patch or something like that and you're dead yep one shot done random have, yeah random spawn in behind you boom <laughs> dead yes so like that's the commando i feel like he he does best when he's able to stack attack speed, critical strikes, and weapon procs that are beneficial from those base things. Right. So bleed, fucking really good with bleed, really good with sticky, really good with stun, really good with anything like that you're going to want to grab. The blasting yeah. behemoth. And it, like, it's up to you too, like what you prefer and what you want to be like, go ahead and take that to your friend who is also going to need weapon procs. Right. You know what I mean? And it's also up to them what they prefer. But I would say like, try to get him shooting as fast as possible with as much critical hit as possible, which is with as many passive procs as possible. And just as far as healing, he's the best thing you could get for him is the heal on hit. Shield on kill, That those two are going to be your best for that. Oh, yeah. So, let's move on to the Engineer now. The Engineer you'll unlock after you've done 30 warp gates total. Once you've completed 30 levels, you'll unlock the Engineer. The Engineer is the best class in the game to play solo. He is one of the best classes to play in a group. Like, he'll always fit into a group perfectly. And he's the only character in the fucking game that's going to benefit from the fucking fungus. Which is, an, which is a passive item that allows, if you stand still, a patch of healing extends around you. And it'll heal you and your friends. It'll heal his turrets. For him, it's the only, he's the only character who's going to need this. Because his turrets are always going to be stationary. And this will give them some passive healing around them for the group, for each other. It's just really beneficial for him to have those. And right. No one else needs them. Nope. Now, I'm not going to lie. You're that, not running. Yeah. You're not standing yeah. still. You're running the there, whole time. There are, there are possibly situations where <laughs> you, you could. If, yeah, where you're going to run away and you're like, okay, I can, cr I can chill here and cover for a minute. But it's not going to be long enough for that hill to matter. So much as that hill on the engineer... With if as soon as he st you stack it five or six times on the engineer, it's a huge pad of healing that the whole group can get around. And like we were talking about, 
zoners. The yeah. engineer is 100% one of these characters we would classify as like a zone control. Create a zone here and control it. The bustling fungus really helps this, like I said, because it creates a portable healing pad. Yep. And you can you have and, two pads because yes. you pull out two turrets two at the turrets, same time. Yep. You stack them on each other. They're receiving bonus double healing yep. from those two patches. <laughs> then you, you're able to, if you've been stacking War Banner, like you said, which yeah. the engineer, another, he's just the best person to have the War Banner. Yep. Once he's stacked that a few times and he gets one of those, it's a huge zone. If he's got a bunch of bustling fungus, now he's got huge area of effect from his, you know, his uh, turret heals. Mm -hmm. And he's able to just, and his alt ability, which is, I guess it's not an alt ability, it's a shift ability, but I've rekeyed mind alt but right. either, his utility <laughs> skill most of their skills being dodges and stuff his utility skill is very unique it's a bubble a protective bubble that will block all enemy attacks and basically cover his turrets with a shield and then he has mines so another ability that's really good for zoning dropping mines controlling this section of the map and mm -hmm. if they come in here they're <clears> going to not only get hurt by my turrets but you know what I mean? They're oh, not yeah. going to be able to hit me or my turrets if they're ranged because I got my bubble. Yep. So he's just, he's, that's why he's one of the best classes to play uh, solo or in a group because he's, he's a very effective zoner. I would say he's the best zone in the game. As in my experience from what I've played. Yeah. I've only played a couple with Rex that were really good and long where I was able to get built. And I'd say he's really good. He needs a couple of little changes. We'll, we'll get, get into, into his yeah. issues later, though. He's, he's the last. the newest character, yeah, he's though. The Keep newest. that in mind. So he, he hasn't been play tested or played around with by the community and commented about because they are 100% taking community feedback into account. Oh, yeah. And uh, this last update, they made some changes to the Artificer that are really great. Uh, personally, I don't think she needed them. I, I don't understand. I think that maybe the reason she also ties into what Nito was saying about online being like race to get items. Right. She has a very specific set of things she needs. Right. If she doesn't have those things, she's not going to be nearly as effective as any of the other characters. Right. The Huntress... Let's move on to the Huntress. The Huntress is a another returning character. I guess we forgot to say the Engineer was also returning from yeah, Brain. The first three that we talk about. Yeah. So the Huntress is a returning character from Risk of Brain One, and like we went into during the Commander Commando section, she has a, a very very good AOE ability. I would say one of the best in the game, and that's not including her R ability, which is also a very good AOE ability. Does puts out a lot of damage, and it slows the enemy. But the yet. Huntress's the Huntress's main thing that makes her shine is the fact that she could be just take out an entire group of sprites out of the sky with one ability. Yep, and like that alone is good, but that's all enemies. And as well as if she hits a boss with that attack and the boss is surrounded by little mobs, it's going to do multiple hits to the boss. Mm -hmm. You add on top of that, if she, like, for instance, say she had decided to go bleed and the commando had said, I'm going to go, you know, uh, sticky grenade. Yeah. Her bleed will proc off for R2. Yeah. Her stun will proc off an R2. Passive stun ability will proc off an R2. Then she has her R ability, which is a volley of arrows that she can target anywhere on the map it's it's pretty the range is significant oh yeah <laughs> you can you can go pretty far with that volley so from safely away you can pop that up and use that um her utility skill is a teleport that i think could be changed into being able to go anywhere in any direction yes that's my only beef. yes <laughs> the, that's one of my problems with her is her she has a short distance teleport but it only goes in a forward direction. Yes. So, I mean, and this is this is the balancing thing I feel like maybe with her because the thing about her is also she's one of the one of the only two characters, the mercenary being the other, but she's one of only two characters in the game that can attack at full sprint. Right. So, most of the characters will be sprinting and then once you stop the sprint and start to once you shoot, it will automatically stop the sprint. Yeah. She has the benefit of she can just, you know, just like I mean, I feel like she's an elf, you know, they don't call her a huntress. She feels like Legolas to me. Yeah. Like that sort of, you know, just ranger all over the place. Yeah, shooting, ranger shooting, elf. Shooting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
and she she so her she can just run by and shoot people as she's sprinting safely running away um she's she's really solid character i would say of of all the characters in the game she would be the one that would be very the most solid for solo play she's solid in group play because like i said her aoe is ridiculous and it oh, comes yeah. in so handy in a group setting when you're just getting overwhelmed and w coupled with the commando who's more of all about single target damage right you know hitting one target really hard she could also hit one target really hard but she also has the capability of hitting multiple targets for ridiculously hard oh yeah so she's just <laughs> overall overall a very solid solo in a group character i feel that way about all of them but some of them are more advanced yeah as far as skill play and also needed to kind of be curtailed in a certain way to become as effective as possible right and so let's talk about the first one the artificer is a new character to risk of rain too she i do not i do not remember her she I'm was sure not in the first one yeah i'm pretty sure she's a brand new character to risk of rain too yeah uh she plays a lot like i mean she's a mage she's a spellcaster yeah. so the way she's very tricky but i feel like she's a zoner and that's how i played her when i played her now here's the conditions under which i was able to play her that way though is i was able to get multiple stacks of my r2 which is the extra clip which will if it's an item and each each one of those will increase the max charges you're able to have stored and her r2 ability is just devastating it's a charged nova bomb so you can be thrown immediately and do a little bit of damage but if you charge it it will do aoe damage around it as well as a huge explosion at the target hit right that will damage everything around it and you couple that with aoe abilities like uh gasoline when the enemy dies they explode in a ball of fire and increase will of the wisp, yes, will of the wisp you combine it with that and it's just very effective with mobs now you couple that with the use item that's the black hole that summons that pulls all enemies into one area and you're going to be so effective at dealing with all of the little enemies in the game that it's not it's it's ridiculous oh yeah she her uh utility skill is a wall of frost much like ymir or may and overwatch many other characters there's one that does it in fucking over or paladins right anyway this ability that's a wall of ice she's able to do that but instead of just hindering the enemy's progress it also deals in significant damage as well as freezes elites lesser mobs basically anything but boss mobs right. will be frozen by this attack um you so the way i was playing her was i was using that black hole it was pulling everyone into it then i'd do my wall on them and then i'd just throw charge nova bombs at them till they die for single target her left her left click is a little different her auto attack yeah it's a fireball it only holds four charges but the benefit of this is they've managed to tweak her cooldowns in such a way that i feel like the way they want you to play her and i think it's stated as such in the guide that you read each character on the character select screen will have tips from the people the yeah, developers it's telling the overview, you yeah. yeah the developers giving you advice on how what they do effectively what you should be looking for right and so with her i think that they wanted you to use the left click until it was empty use another spell use whatever left click had refueled use another spell use, use whatever left ability, click yeah and the left which... click yes we didn't go into that the the r ability yeah the, that's the nova bomb that was the flamethrower oh the r ability yeah the r oh <laughs> gosh her ultimate uh, man <laughs> it's not even an ultimate because the yeah the cooldown is really great and that's another great skill oh yeah because that's up close and personal you've got to be really close to hit them with it and but it this, just sears yes, their health and in this recent scorched earth update they added her they gave her the ability to hover which is really awesome it helps her i feel like the only thing it was really necessary for was dealing with flying enemies right i think that may have and her r2 the nova bomb is very good at dealing with flying enemies because the aoe will shock off and hit sprites and things mm -hmm. but 
the I feel like she's just very very one of those characters that's not only incredibly skill based but also very dependent on item RNG yeah and I feel like her ability her capability is best used in a group setting with friends who is going to be like hey here's this hey here's this you know you need an extra r2 here you go here's an extra clip over here come grab yeah. it oh you need some will of the wisp you know you need some gasoline some you know hit Girl bars yeah damage on aoe on death yeah here you go because once she has all that stuff going with the black hole she can pull a whole entire group together and just destroy them mm -hmm. in point two the likes of which i i i've only seen with rex rex is the only other person i've seen and he doesn't even he's not able to destroy them as quickly as she is right like he's able to control them as significantly and a little bit more because i feel like his stun is a little bit more effective i mean it's not necessarily a stun but it is for most melee enemies right because if you know they can't get to you they can't kill you we'll get into him anyway i feel like she's very much a situational character best used in a group setting i mean if you're solo i feel like you could end up getting the right thing with her but it's definitely going to be harder than if you were playing the engineer right or if you were playing the huntress or hell even the commando you know you're gonna have better luck because the items they need are less rare and less specific right there's more things that they can get to cover the specific things that they need yeah she needs r2 clips she needs them she needs that dimensional pull oh yeah she needs you know extra alt ability is there an extra alien utility head? skill like cooldowns would be yeah. really useful for yeah, her. yeah yeah stuff like that she needs really specific things i feel like to hit her potential i played a lot of matches with her and there was only one that i felt where i actually was able to get her to where i felt like she should be right doing what i felt like she should be doing right and so then it was it was just one match and every other time i played her it just did not end well right at all i, I didn't get the right things i wasn't able to do the right damage effectively that's how i felt on her right and anyway so let's move on to the next character that i feel is very skill based but less less um let's see <laughs> it's less important that he gets specific items right does that make sense yeah because i he's mean like the, he's like the commando he's got a lot of the mercenary it's the mercenary yes yeah. and he is a returning character from risk of rain as well right and like he benefits from a lot of backup magazines because they help him keep him in the air which if you're dealing with wisps and shit on him it's pretty much a must have yeah because i mean even though it's shift you can dash through too. him and do damage as a, as a melee character he he really only has the r ability that can you which is a teleport and then he gains complete damage immunity while he does a series of attacks right in a in an ao in an area of effect where the dash completed or where an enemy was struck before the dash was completed right um and that that's about the only thing he has for dealing with wisps outside of like you said his right click which is a aerial spin, spin and then his shift it doesn't which really the extend shift, the height of his jump it no. extends the distance of his jump yeah so you go further but that's where the shift is very important <clears throat> his yeah. utility is a dash but it's unlike the uh huntress's dash his is more like you dash and you want to hit enemies with it. Yeah, right? because it does damage as you go through. And not them. only that, but if you hit one enemy, then you can dash again up to three times. Mm. So if you see three wisps in the air, you I can... I didn't even know that. Yeah, you can do that. You can hit dash, hit dash, one, dash, 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 okay. dash three times, and then you do your... Uh... That's interesting. I didn't even know that while I was playing him. I was only doing one dash. Yeah. I, I knew that it did damage, but I didn't know that you could extend it. With... You can dash it three if, times yeah. yeah so that's cool I, I i wonder if that's how he was in the first one i think that is 
Yeah. I think I probably should have known that. I didn't spend a whole lot of time playing the mercenary. I didn't really play the mercenary in the first one. The only melee character I played in the first one was like the alien guy where yeah. he spewed the acid that, that did guy damage was over cool. time. Yeah, I want to see that him guy, return yeah. because what I want his to, name. I, I can't, can't even remember. I can't either. All oh. I remember was the acid because he would spew it on the ground and well, not. I'd only, like to see the chef too. Yeah, the chef too. And I'd like. I to think see, he'd be really cool to see in what third was the, person. The shield guy. He was yeah, the, the, the riot, shotgunner, the riot guard, or yeah. the riot trooper. He had the shield with the riot shotgun. The shotgun, and he had a shotgun blast that stunned. He was really fun. He was really good in a group. Oh yeah. Um. Anyway, we're getting off track. <laughs> the mercenary is, he feels to me like you would, you have to be very good on him. There's a lot amount, there's a huge amount of skill needed to, and you need to understand enemies too on him. Because there's some enemies that later on in the game, if you try to melee, it's, you're probably going to get hit by attacks that they have. I would say the Malachite Imps. And are the, the ones that have always killed me on him at the oh, yeah. end game. Same here, Malachite. They one shot you. you. Where I was just starting to ignore them. Right. And letting you guys kill them. And in a solo setting, which I haven't played him solo yet. In a solo setting, I feel like he's going to be a lot trickier to play than Engineer, Huntress, you know, the Commando even. And I feel like he's like the Commando where he's going to benefit from a, a very broad array of items. So he's going to, in a group setting, he's going to be able to stack, you know, like crit or fucking bleed or something like that. And he's going to be okay, much the same way that a commando would. And letting go of like stickies, letting go of like, you know, other crits or things like that and giving those up to a group member. Right. He's going to be all right and he's going to have a wide array of items that are going to be helpful to him throughout the course. However, unlike the commando who has a lot of range... The mercenary is, you know, stuck to a melee weapon, which it hits hard, you know, and it does apply a lot of really good, you know, it'll apply dots, it'll stack with the attack speed to where you're swinging really fast. But I think the key to him is, like you were saying, doing that dash three times, doing his R ability, doing all of his skills, essentially, and then getting out. Right. And getting those back and then going back in. And, you know, sure, you can attack on the periphery with him and kind of work down littler enemies. But I'd say if you're going after a Malkite Imp, have your abilities ready to get in, get out, and run away and let to get them back. Oh, yeah. A lot of, you know, and that's kind of how abilities... all, the, all the classes in the endgame feel. Oh, yeah. But his abilities are very catered to that specific criteria. Yeah. Because his uh, right button ability, if you do it on the ground instead of the air, it propels you forward. So if yeah. you have multiple clips, you could click that twice and it's just like you're dashing yeah. while you're spinning. Yeah, you know doing I mean? damage, yeah. Yeah. And so he's he's very cool. I think he's about in and out, in and out, in and out. Oh yeah, all he, the way. And he's fun. He's very fun. And he can you can stack and build him in a way that he has the potential to deal. Just be one of those boss killing. He characters. will shit on everything. He is in a the boss screen. killing character. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he's like the commando in that in that as well. He's a boss killing character. Less of like an AOE, dealing with multiple mobs, being able to be flighty in and out like the Huntress, or a zone character like the Engineer and the Artificer, right. who are going to be able to control a certain area of the map. Right. You know, it's up to a certain point. Anyway, that's what I feel about the Mercenary. Yeah. Now there's Multi. Multi is a badass. He's Wally with a fucking nail gun. The, and, uh, what was his other one? The, I know that his. He, it's the sniper. So he's unique in a, in a, in this way. He has two primary attack weapons. He has one up close that's a rapid fire nail gun. Right. And, then and it's the, a shotgun too. The first initial burst shoots seven in a shot like okay. in a widespread and then each shot is just like one nail that does more damage. So okay. it's like the first initial burst is the shotgun. Okay. And then his other weapon is the charge sniper. This thing has an incredible range. Yeah, you can be very far away, <clears throat> safely away. You can snipe motherfuckers from yeah. the other side of the world. I was having if trouble you want. <laughs> when I was playing him. Here's the thing about Multi. He is very good at crowd control, but he is going to be a skill 
character. You're going to have to play him quite a lot and get into that swapping and being able to take advantage of not only his different primary firing modes, but also the fact that he gets to use items. So you're going to, and you're going to be able to, so you could have one, the one that summons in 10 drones or five right. drones, however many it is, and the one that shoots missiles. Right. And so you're going to want to be able to be skilled enough with the character to understand which item you want accompanying which ability. Some abilities may be used, better used up close, and you might want them on your shotgun plus the, you know, the right. auto rifle one. You might want something that's more effective at long range with your sniper one. Right. And I, I, my, I was having a lot of hard time switching between the auto fire with holding down the left click and the sniper. I was, I would switch using the items, but my mind wouldn't register that I needed to let go of the left click now because you know if you hold it in the sniper mode, it charges the shot, and it'll so just you have continue. To, you ha yeah. yeah, and you have to release to shoot it. So and I was having this problem in my mind dealing with that. And, I, and that's when I said, yes, this is going to be a more skill-based player. Oh, yeah. That said, I also was able to stack R2 in the, abil in the, in the run we ran. And I had just for days of stuns. And that and I, stun canister yeah. is so you can, useful. You can just stop... <sighs> An elite mob, like an elite golem or an elite... Uh, Imps. Yeah. The, Malachite, yeah. stone, Malachite anything. Enemies, like, yes. Anything you're just, but flight. With him, you're able to stop them in their tracks and control them for not only him to deal with, but your group to surround and overwhelm as well. Oh, yeah. And if you have enough of those extra clips, you're able to just keep them just boom, 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 periodically stunned in place and just... Dude, he i would say he because of that stun if he if can get built he's going to be the character that i feel is going to be able to go the distance the most oh yeah if he gets the right things the right stuff because like the other night we went for days when i was him and i was able to build him insane oh yeah and i got risky and i took you know i took the second glass blade the glass yeah which is an item that cuts your life in half but increases your uh damage, damage. by half so I was I picked up two of those very risky. I think if I had built him more conservatively with the stuns and other things I had, I we I could have gone for days. Oh him. yeah. I feel like he's one of those characters where you're going to hit that wall where you have to give up. Oh yeah. Because you're not going to lose. You're just going to be like you're okay, just, yeah. it's time for to give up and let's you know take the way out yeah. or just die, let him kill you. This was a good run, but I'm done with it now. Yes, yes. <laughs> like it's been 2 hours. It's like that match that me and you had where you were Rex and I was We went teams. for days. Yeah, dude. dude. Yeah. It's because how I built him in that instance was, was I how... was not, I was building him for your AoE. So I built the black hole on my sniper mm -hmm. and then I got armor piercing rounds as well is like tons of crit and so therefore my sniper it would not only crit but it would pierce through all the enemies yeah dude and i would look for your aoe which would root them and i would just yeah. suck them in with the black hole pull them all into that and just then they'd be aim rooted. down my sights shoot a canister it and stuns just them be all over there tossing you know mortars, mortars and, fire yeah. <laughs> so like he is he's definitely end game tier potential like he's gonna be a character that i feel I feel for a lot of people when they hit that point where, like I said, they're just steamrolling. Oh, yeah. It's a point that you can hit in Risk of Rain to where nothing can hurt you. You're killing everything like that. It's 100% possible. It was in the first game. It definitely is in the second. I felt that potential. Right. And yeah. so, and we've ended some too. Just that because, were, because we they were, were so long. We yeah. just ended them because we're all tired it's time to go to bed holy fuck it's like three in the fucking morning you guys yeah. i didn't even realize this it's like what the fuck <laughs> yeah we just lost a day fucking risk of rain is amazing <laughs> oh my god this game anyway multi awesome solid in even single player playing him with his stun he's he's definitely one i'd say that's going to be able to go the distance more so than like a mercenary right more so than an artificer right who have very specific i guess the artificer more than the mercenary but right anyway and i think that's why the artificer had that bad rap to where they buffed her in this current patch. and gave her the hover i feel like uh, yeah gave her the hover i think they increased damage and slighted cooldowns on certain things 
I don't know exactly everything they did, but they definitely retooled her. And I feel like the, the reason for that was a response to her not being able to be played the way the developers intended her to be played because of that online element that are just like, okay, it's a race to see who can get the most stuff. Right. There's no teamwork involved. There's no like, oh, you should take that because, yeah, it's beneficial for me, but I understand that it's way better for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if they, in that sort of setting, I think that's why. Anyway. Let's talk, move on to Rex. The final character. This is Rex is the newest <laughs> character added, and he's also a... Oh, Multi was a returning character from Risk of Rain 1 as well. Yeah. Before we fucking move past Multi and forget to say that. <laughs> but Rex is brand Rex new. Rex is brand new to this game. He is fucking Feed Me Seymour with robotic legs. Yep. <laughs> he's pretty great. He is very unique <laughs> in a sense that uh, not only does he heal himself with his abilities, but his abilities also cost help to use. Yes. So he's doing damage by doing damage to himself, but then he's also able to heal himself and his all of his heals apply the weakness debuff to the enemy, which increases the damage they take from everything as well as increases the healing you get from yes. that enemy. So first and foremost, never pick up a shield when you're on Rex. I feel like shields are pointless because of that damage he does for to himself in order to do skills. Right. Which is mortar fire, which is his right click ability. That ability you use that all the time. So essentially you're just never going to have your shields unless it's a cooldown time when you're running and searching or, you know, mm -hmm. there's no enemies about. It, the second there's enemies about that shield is the the reason you want that shield is because there's enemies about, but you're just going to destroy it yourself, you know, doing your doing your, damage yeah. to yourself yeah uh, his r ability is the other ability that damages him so his right click is a mortar fire ability that will damage his health slightly his left click is a three shot burst of darts or needles or something there, thorns yeah something thorns. but the third one of the burst weakens and heals you yes. so it's not like slightly, all of them not heal a ton you. of healing yeah, no. slightly healed and it's only the third yes. shot the way basically the way you want to play him is exactly like the artificer or the engineer in my opinion and that is take over this area control this area you know whether it's by some cover so you can avoid enemies ranged attacks if they're hitting you a lot or something like that but if you're able to get a massive group of them enemies hit with your r ability it will heal you for each one hit and you can use your r fire to blast them and i would say if you want to get some sort of shielding get that bronze brooch right yeah the one that gives you the healing or the shield for killing mm -hmm. that is very effective on him oh yeah um i feel like the black hole is really good on him he's a character that should prioritize getting the black hole yes because you can pull like you were saying you were doing it with multi yeah we I were also both yeah using i also it, yeah. was able to get it so we were able to just control large amounts of enemies easy oh yeah pull them all together tag them with the r ability which roots all of them and it controls barrel launch to yeah. stun i think they, <laughs> they fucking we went far bro so far <laughs> we went the fucking distance that's on why that i really enjoy rex though is that r ability yeah. how it roots them because no other character has that yeah where like a straight crowd control yeah like root. it stops them like you know multi he has a stun it's the commando has imps. a stun it's such yeah. a good counter to imps and things oh, like that that yeah. are melee in your face but the, all these characters they have something kind of like a crowd control but his it physically forces them in that circle yeah so the imps and shit they can move but they can't move outside that circle yeah. they'll just get pulled back in and even if they do move outside the circle they're going to be stuck there. Yeah. So the one problem with Rex, I feel like, is his utility skill. Yes. <laughs> now, I understand what they're going for. It's kind of like a get them out of your face ability. Or you get out of their face. Yeah. But either way, even... So what his ability does is it's a burst in front of him that will launch enemies backwards, kind of like a pushback, and will also weaken them so they'll take more damage. The problem I have with this is that in the air it's supposed to blast you back but i feel like it doesn't send you back enough and i feel like with him at least the way i was able to build him and the way i've been able to play him 
I've not really used it at all. No. I've not really had the... I mean, sure, it's nice to have there if you do get an imp up in your face or something like that. And it's like, oh, look, I can use this. But if you build him the way I was building him, where it was black holes and crowd controls and, you know, fucking just basically healing on me out the butt, healing on damage, healing on kills, healing, you know, healing, 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 healing. Oh, yeah. So being able to build him like that, I felt each time I played him that his alt ability or his utility skill needs to be tweaked. Yes. Needs to be powered up, needs to deal damage, I needs think to it should incentivize be... me to use it more than I'm using it. I think it should be reworked, right? So like the ground one, I understand how it works and I do use it. You know, I don't, like, not ever use it. Mainly on, like, imps and shit that get up in your face. You push them back. It works pretty well. But the thing about the aerial, and I brought this up to you the other night. What I think it should be is a secondary jump. But it should drop spores in a line so it still weakens them. But it's a second jump. Kind of like the Merc, you know? Yeah. So you can get out of shit. You can dodge behind cover. You have a lot more getaway. A mo- an extra jump regardless of whether you get one throughout the playthrough or not. Oh, yeah. Because my biggest issue with Rex in every match that I played with him ends the same way. I will have soda cans. I will have red whips. I will have Paul's goat hoofs. I will have movement speed out the ass. I even stacked it so high that I got the challenge for like 300% movement speed. Yeah, where you had to get speed. ridiculous amount of movement speed. Yeah, I had that on him. And still, it's not enough for me to sprint out of danger. Because that's the biggest problem that I have with him. Is if you don't have any uh, like jumps or flight or anything like that. And you're just stuck with your movement speed as your getaway. Your shift is pointless. Yeah. And everybody else has a shift that is beneficial. Even the artificer where it freezes or it controls that they can't walk through this wall. The engineer, you know, it drops an impenetrable bubble. So you're inside of it. You can't take damage. I think it could also just be a stun, like a single target stun. Right. Like launch a special thorn that just stuns one enemy straight up. Yeah. It doesn't have to work on bosses. I don't know. I didn't feel like, yeah, I felt like he needed something more than just that pushback. Right. I felt like that was situational for certain things. And otherwise I just didn't even use it at all. Mm-hmm. I felt like with other characters, I'm using their, their utility skill way more than I'm using rex's utility oh yeah because it's their getaway or their ability to control how much damage they take and for rex it's literally nothing it just propels you backwards or pushes (laughs) them forward and it doesn't give you enough backwards momentum at all for it to be it's uh, just a slight i've tried platforming with it like how i would with neath like you'd be sprinting yeah flip around and launch yourself yeah Yeah, and it's like oh i think that did nothing (laughs) yeah it's not it's it needs a little bit more it needs a little bit something extra to it yeah that's what i'd say about rex Mm-hmm. but overall he's a fun addition i'm glad they i'm, I'm having oh, yeah. a lot of fun playing him he's an interesting character uh really good in a group i say he's really good in a group i think oh, yeah. if you teamed him with an engineer with a multi with you're gonna a huntress have, yeah with a huntress with or a mercenary yeah it doesn't he's, he's it's gonna like... be really good with a lot of uh, he's gonna be helpful oh yeah he's gonna be a character that benefits having a secondary hand there to take advantage of what he does yeah because he can take advantage of what he does but i feel like what really having a lot of aoe damage with him having a lot of other control ability with him he's he's definitely going to be a character that you're going to want to play in groups oh yeah less than by yourself yes less than by yourself i would say oh yeah Anyway, that's all seven. Yep, that's all seven. The there's returning bosses. There's returning. It's basically Kate. So here we let's round this out with when we first heard about this. I remember I told you I'm like, dude, the Hopo, you know the fucking dudes who made fucking Risk of Rain. They're making Risk of Rain two in three D, dude. <laughs> so the article I read about it, it, they were talking about how they had never made a game like this before. They'd never done third person, and part of me was apprehensive because I feel like that's got to be fucking cr- way harder than a two D pixelated side scroller. Like, and I'm not gonna demean that first game. I love that first game for everything that it is. Right. Everything that it is. The nostalgia factor, the fucking music, the art style, 
the uniqueness of that Souls-like element of story, discovery throughout the environment, all of those things I love about Risk of Rain. But I was apprehensive because hearing that they had moved to third-person 3D perspective, part of me was just like, ah, can they pull it off? Right. And I expected it years away. Mm -hmm. Years and years out. And here we are, less than two years after hearing that announcement, and we're playing it in early access. And it's fucking phenomenal. It's smooth. It's responsive. When I die, it's because I fucking died. Yep. Because I missed a dodge. I missed... I over... I underestimated an enemy's power. I got cocky. I was trying to be overly aggressive when I should have been running away defensively exactly. and attacking on the run. Yep. Like, it's Stood always... still too yes, long. <laughs> every death that I've experienced in Risk of Rain 2, not a single one of those are at the fault of the game's systems or the game's design. It's at the fault of me not properly... And that's important. That's, in, that's very important. That was a huge aspect of the first one. That's something that in a game that's all about, like, permadeath runs, I guess, and it is permadeath. Like, you die, game over. Oh, yeah. But the thing about each run is that at the end of it, when you die, there may be, with some characters, a feeling of, like, fuck, I just had a shitty game. Like, I didn't get what I needed. Yeah. But for the vast majority of games that I've played in this, that you've played in this, matches that we have played... I would say the vast majority, it feels like it's my fault. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I shouldn't have went in there. Oh, fuck, I should have dodged. Oh, fuck, I missed my ability. Oh, fuck, you know, like... Yep, I shouldn't have been bad. standing there yep. too long. It's on ha, ha, ha. They're spawning in every yep. five seconds. I can't be sitting here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's your fault in that it's smooth. Enemy AI is very well fucking developed, and it they act in surprising manner. I noticed the Malkite enemies flee in direct uh aggression mm -hmm. because they kind of fall back and they spam that ability that uh shoots causes, out yeah the AOE. And they, they react differently and then you know they'll they'll flank you they'll they'll know where you are they'll come and the, the ai pathing is great they're pushing you where you're at they're not off in the distance like running into a wall like, right i've the ai that i've seen have all been very well developed mm -hmm. it's the same monsters from the first game and i'm fucking like when you see a new one in the, when you're nurse initially playing it coming from the first game you're like oh my god oh my god oh my god yeah i just was like oh my god dude i'm so fucking happy we're playing this right yeah, now dude so we might inhabit a timeline where starcraft got fucking an fps starcraft game got axed but we got risk of fucking rain too. And in that timeline, they may have gotten that game, but I'm fine with risk of rain too. Yeah. I'd much rather get risk of rain too from Hopu games over fucking any blizzard fucking Starcraft FPS. Oh yeah. I take it in our timeline. I take it. This game's the shit. It is awesome. Get it. It's going to be hours and hours of fun. It's already been hours and hours and hours of fun. And that's with no final boss and no final level. The second you have the ability to get this game, get it. Get fucking it. get it. <laughs> Buy it and play the fuck out of it and you'll thank me later. <laughs> this is a gamer's game built by gamers. Yep. This is a game that's all about what would be cool, what would be fun, what's a good idea for the game, what's a good idea for the game. No fucking design decisions inhibiting it. Because they want to sell fucking loot boxes on the side, or they want to fucking get people log again for daily rewards, or weekly challenges, or fucking collectible sticker books. Yeah. Just a good, honest, hardcore, sit down ending. Like the game, dying is the end game, man. Yep. This is a fucking awesome You're game. You're supposed dude. to die. It's just a question of when. when. <laughs> can you go there the distance will, but there will be an ending there they will add a ending just like the first game and i i can't wait because i truly hope it's on the ship the, the, yeah, the that dude. was so wicked going back to that shit the, the ship level was so awesome i want to see it that had unique enemies <laughs> it had like legit things that were only in it it was such an awesome level and so big you had like the prison cells. yeah that you could open 
There was like you could activate the fucking laser beam before he came in and shoot him with that. Like yeah. the final boss. It was a wicked level that had insane amounts of replay potential. And I felt that about every level that we've played. Mm -hmm. I found things that I'm like, man, are there things in these other levels that got me looking in these other levels for hidden things? Oh, yeah. Because I'm like, they must be in these other is levels. Is it up above or down what below? What did we miss? Where is this? Yeah, where yeah. is it? There's something here. There's a secret hidden here. There's something fucking here, guys. Oh, yeah. And that feeling, that's great. I, I love this game. Fucking so grateful to be able to play it. Thank you, Crumble, fucking for picking this up for yeah. us. Fucking awesome, dude. I love this game, dude. For twenty bucks, knowing what they're gonna be adding, knowing what's gonna come later, it's just I fucking excited for this game. Oh yeah. This is one of those games, just like Risk of Rain Two, Risk of Rain One, that comes along that you play that you're like, oh my fucking god, I this remember why genius. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> I remember why I crave this. I remember why gaming is what I want to do. What like when I have a free moment, I want to play a game. Like I remember why now. Yeah. That's what Risk of Rain did. That's what Risk of Rain 2 does for me. Oh, yeah. So, early access impressions, fucking 80,000 thumbs up. Oh, yeah. 10 out of 10. As many fucking thumbs up Already. as I can ever pop. Yeah, Already. Dude. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. I don't even care. 10 out of 10 early access. 10 out of 10 buy perfect it. game. Fucking GG. Fucking Hopu. Fucking thank you. Yeah. So much for making this a thing that exists. Yes. Sincerely. <laughs> Thank you. Everyone else, we love you. Thanks for watching. Chubs. Jax. We're out of here. Hey.